This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour, when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Oh, it's very odd. No one has turned up for work. I'm all alone. I, I have no orders. Nothing's appearing on this screen. Could, could someone please... I must, I must go to the meeting room. They might be there. Hello? All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed... Oh, please. Are you really just doing this for the achievement? Click a door five times, is that all that you think an achievement is worth? No, 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 no. I can't just give these merits away for such little effort. A measly five clicks. Now suppose you were to click the door 20 times. I would say that's the kind of effort that warrants recognition. Uh, okay. Uh, let's go click 20 doors then. Come on, well, please open. I need the achievement. Please, someone, please. <laughs> There must be someone here who can help me. Uh, there's a painting. There's a door! Oh, whoops. Let's, let's get the back open, shall we? Where'd that door go? Can someone explain to me how this door works? See, that looks like an idiot. Hmm. Oh, okay. Hello? Is someone in here? No? You. You. I'm all alone here. Can someone help me? Why is there a ladder in there? Hello? Hello? What did do? No. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. I did enter the door on the left. She's very good at this narrator. Hello? Paintings? Oh my god! Employee of the year. <laughs> I am. Door, hello? Windows? No. Meeting room, here you go. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Okay, I'm not here. Maybe my boss's office. Just have a look around here. Do you? There's a green closet, maybe there's Oh no, oh no, 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 not again. I won't be part of this. I'm not going to encourage you. I'm not going to say anything at all. I'm just going to be patient and wait for you to finish whatever it is you enjoy doing so much in this room. Please take your time. Why am I thank you? Oh, get out of here. Oh, stairs. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. I, I thought the boss's office was downstairs, but okay, I trust you, narrator. Yeah, my full narrator trust. Uh, here. Exec 
get to the bathroom. Can I use that? Why does everyone lock their doors? Oh. No. Hello? Is anyone actually here? Why am I alone here? What's that? What's that? It's grass. Hello? Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this. What dark secret was being held from him? What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. Two, eight, four, five. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Hmm. How do I do I can't get out of this room? How do I there's a keypad here? Uh, yes. Stanley just sat around twiddling his thumbs, trying to input anything on the yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, yes. Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. I he stepped it. into the newly opened passageway. Well done, I feel special. I got that I first time. Ouch. God damn this elevator with its things that fall off. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Uh, let's get this way then. <laughs> Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. I es escape. Um, I don't need to escape from any. I'm guessing that's like a fire escape? Okay, we're just gonna say that. Enough for now. Oh, this doesn't look too good, does it? Numbers and a button. Oh. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? At least television screens. Mm, I'd like to play Battlefield 4 on that. Cameras. Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. Oh my goodness. They observe all of us. This doesn't look good. Wait, let me see if I'm going to be fired. Fired. Oh my fault. I'm in my. I'm in my which employee I am. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? That doesn't sound too good. I don't no. Know. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content, walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. Oh, this is awful.
job. My GoWalk was all controlled. We're made to like this job. To press buttons, to do as we're told. Ouch. Hit my hand. Anyway, let's get through here. Maybe we can shut this thing down once and for all. Mind control idle. Awaiting input. And when at last he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation, to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. I, I never want to be mind controlled again. Oh god, it's dark. Someone help me, it's dark. Can't see anything. Narrator, don't leave me. Blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? Yes, he had won. He had defeated the machine unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Free. I'm free. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. I won. I beat the game. That was pretty easy if you ask me. I mean, it wasn't too hard. <laughs> Wait, what's going on? Why am I back here? All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Wait, what, what's going on? Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference, nor did it advance the story in any way. I thought I just beat the... What's going on? I just did it. Why am I in here? When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Let's go the opposite of whatever he says. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Oh, maybe that's where they all are, in the employee lounge. Quick, a door. Why am I trapped in here? I want to go home. Wow. Yes. This room. What a beautiful room. What a gorgeous, gorgeous room. Thank goodness Stanley had taken this detour on his way to the meeting room. Life without having experienced this room was now too horrible even to consider. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. No. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. I'm not lying. Okay, uh, do not jump from the cargo lift while it is in motion, will cause death. Penalty for misuse of cargo lift, $1,000. Penalty for jumping off the cargo lift, $5,000. Well, I don't have that kind of money, so let's continue. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. 
I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. Who? This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. She's been waiting. Where am I? That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. To reach out Hello? Oh, Stanley, is that you? Uh, hold on, sweetie. Sorry to keep you waiting. I'm just pulling the bread out of the oven. All right. Okay, there we go. All right, now, I want you to come in and tell me all about... Get your damn <laughs> oh my Gotcha. Oh, oh me. come on. Did you actually think you had a loving wife? Who'd want to commit their life to you? I'm trying to make a point here, Stanley. I'm trying to get you to see something. Come inside. Let me show you what's really going on here. Oh, God. I thought I had a wife and I wanted bread. And this is a very you know? sad story about the death of a man named Stanley. Okay. Stanley is quite a boring fellow. He has a job that demands nothing of him, and every button that he pushes is a reminder of the inconsequential nature of his existence. Look at him there, pushing buttons, doing exactly what he's told to do. Now he's pushing a button. Now he's eating lunch. Now he's going home. Now he's coming back to work. One might even feel sorry for him, except that he's chosen this life. No. No, I'm not, I'm not gonna press the button. You can't make me. You can't make me. Okay, fine. But in his mind, ah. In his mind, he can go on fantastic adventures. From behind his desk, Stanley dreamed of wild expeditions into the unknown. Fantastic discoveries of new lands. It was wonderful. And each day that he returned to work was a reminder that none of it would ever happen to him. And so he began to fantasize about his own job. First, he imagined that one day while at work, he stepped up from his desk to realize that all of his co-workers, his boss, everyone in the building had suddenly vanished off the face of the earth. The thought excited him terribly. So he went further. He imagined that he came to two open doors and that he could go through either. At last, choice. It barely even mattered what lay behind each door. The mere thought that his decisions would mean something was almost too wonderful to behold. As he wandered through this fantasy world, he began to fill it with many possible paths and destinations. Down one path lay an enormous round room with monitors and mind controls. And down another was a yellow line that weaved in many directions. And down another was a game with a baby. And he called it the Stanley Parable. Oh my god, I have kids. It was such a wonderful fantasy. And so in his head, he relived it again, and then again, and again, over and over, wishing beyond hope that it would never end, that he might always feel this free. Surely there's an answer down some new path, mustn't there be? Perhaps if he played just one more time. Uh, I, I love you. But there is no answer. No. How could there possibly be? In reality, all he's doing is pushing the same buttons he always has. Nothing has changed. The longer no. he spends here, the more invested he gets. The more he forgets which life is the real one. This is, this is going back to my office. And I'm trying to tell him this. That in this world, he can never be anything but an observer. That as long as he remains here, he's slowly killing himself. But he won't listen to me. He won't stop. Here, watch this. Stanley, the next time the screen asks you to push a button, do not do it. 
I won't narrate it. I'm stuck here, and it's because I didn't listen to you, and I, I'm not going to listen to you. I'm not going to press that button. Don't waste. I'm not going to press it. Help me. I'm, I'm not going to press this button. You can't make me game. I am defiant against your wills. Just going to hide. Narrator, help me. There's another button I can press. Narrator, help me. Narrator, help me. Press the button, but I can't. I shouldn't. I shouldn't press that button. Do not press that button, Stanley. Just, I can't jump. I can't get out. What am I meant to do? Someone help me! You see, can he just not hear me? How can I tell him in a way that he'll understand that every second he remains here, he's electing to kill himself? How can I get him to see what I see? How can I make him look at himself? I suppose I can't, not in the way I want him to. But I don't make the rules. I simply play to my intended purpose, the same as Stanley. We're not so different, I suppose. I'll try once more to convey all this to him. I'm compelled to. I must. Perhaps, well, maybe this time he'll see. Maybe this time. And I tried again, and Stanley pushed a button. And I tried again, and Stanley pushed a button. No. What happened? Stanley? Narrator? Am I alive? I'm dead. I'm dead. I died. I'm just... Oh, whoa! I'm just... I can't stand this. I'm just going to sit in my office, stay here. I can't... I don't want to do this again. Not again. Not again. Not for the fifth time. Please, no. Don't make me do it again.